Mike, how you back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol and it's fucked up Friday. For new listeners, fucked up Friday is when listeners of this podcast send me in their fucked up drinking story and I read the story out to inspire people on a Friday night to get out there and just go for it. Make a name for yourself. If you're going to do it, at least fucking give it a good crack. And the young lady who sent this in definitely gave it a fucking crack. I've been looking forward to reading out this story all week. I got sent it about a week ago. It's a great story. I've read it a few times, jerked off to it a couple of times. It's a fucking good story. That was a joke, by the way. Comedian David Boyle, remember? But it is a great story, and the girls are out doing the guys. I knew it was going to happen like that. Once the girls started riding in, they were always going to outdo the dudes. Dudes are idiots. Most of the time, things are just happening to us. We don't even know what the fuck's going on. Women are far more calculated, even when they're drunk. Guys are like a year nine education away from literally being fucking monkeys. I knew girls were way ahead of guys, but I didn't realize how far ahead they were until I had a kid. You see the boys and the girls the same age at childcare, and it's like they're fucking 10 years apart. The girls, I'm talking like three and a half, four year old girls, they can already speak fluently. They're reading magazines already. They're writing into fucking Dolly Doctor. The boys. All the boys do is eat sand and run into shit. That's it. Okay, I'm going to start the story. It's a great story. I just want to reiterate. I just want to make this clear. I did not jerk off to this story. Yet. All right, in bold writing at the top, it says, Yes, I want to be anonymous. And that's fair enough. Okay, so here we go. I joined Bumble at the start of the year after six months off from dating. Which one's Bumble? Is Bumble the one where the girl chooses you? The girl always chooses, by the way. It's not my favorite thing meeting strangers and pretending you care about their lives just to get some sex is incredibly tedious. Well, I'm not too sure if you know how men operate then. You do not have to pretend to care about their lives for them to want to fuck you. I just, I just can't imagine any dudes like, yeah, I was going to bang her, but she wasn't really paying attention when I was telling her about the story from last Christmas. It was really off-putting. It was a real turn-off. Lady, you're out of your fucking mind. It's not been going so well on the fun scale. There are some dull characters out there. Yeah, there are some fucking dull characters out there. My first date was an immediate no, camp is Christmas and dull as dishwater. So I dutifully stayed for two drinks and left. So there's some closet gay dude just going out there and just flamboing some puss. Or is he a camp straight dude? They're the worst, aren't they? Because those gay acting straight dudes, they'll be all right up until their 40s and then they'll fucking jump on the dick straight away. Guy number two was a little better and after no tea on a Friday night, instead of him carrying on in the taxi to his, he stayed over. Needless to say, the four Negronis got the better of his penis and his performance was filled with the word sorry being said over and over again. Is this guy me? I had three moves. One of them was that. It was the sorry, sorry. The second move was the listen. I've had that much booze and that much drugs. There's no point even trying. We'll see what happens in the morning. And the third move was the surprise erection that comes out of nowhere. And I'm so excited I have it that it doesn't last long, which ends up being a sorry, sorry anyway. So most of them ended up in sorry, sorry. The word said, the word sorry being said over and over again, quite the buzz kill. In British politeness, I said yes to another date where the sex was again mediocre. He stayed hard, but the quiet missionary sex definitely echoed his Catholic upbringing. Flip her over, buddy. 
Flip her over. Give the hair a yank. Give her a little bit of a choke. Let her know you're there. Jesus Christ. I don't know if this is getting too seedy. It feels like it may be getting too seedy. Maybe I'll pull back a little bit. So third guy is a charm, right? By this point, I'm so over dating. I book in a date on a Tuesday night straight from work and don't even redo my makeup. Almost hoping he'll be boring so I can go home early. I get there early and get a large wine. He arrives and he's far hotter than his pictures made out. Blonde, South African accent, smelt amazing and real chatty. Maybe too chatty, sort of coked off your head chatty. Fuck South Africans. South Africans annoy the shit out of me. Shout out to my South African listeners. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your fucking exports. But South Africans, they do do good with the puss. Maybe too, chatty. Coked off your head, chatty. He bought a round, another large wine, and two tequila shots appear. This guy knows how to play the game. He's like, this bitch is way too sober. That's what you do. You turn up, you order a jug of wine. See if she drinks that. While she's halfway through the wine, shots arrive. This is probably all within the first 10 minutes of the date. It's Tuesday night. At this point, I knew things were about to get interesting. He had an infectious way about him. Shut up. He was a hot blonde South African that smelt nice. And you're now fucking two large wines down. And there's fucking tequilas flying in from all angles. Infectious way about him. By wine three, I was already out smoking with him, even though I'm not usually bothered by it. He managed to turn the conversation onto how I seemed a bit straight-laced, which was annoying me. I definitely am, but the way he said it, it almost made it feel like a challenge. So then I started buying tequila. It was just so infectious. But that's the oldest play in the book. You learn that when you're like 15. You're like, you're frigid. And the girl's like, I'm not frigid. And then you go, yes, you are. And then she's like, no, I'm not. And then you go, well, why don't you touch my dick in math class next period? Next thing you know, you're getting your dick touched under the table in math. It's fucking getting laid 101. You learn it when you're 15. It shouldn't still work later on in life. We move to another pub and things get hazy for a while. All I remember is him pointing to an open disabled toilet door and saying, let's have sex. Go on. (laughs) I dare you. I bet you won't. Jesus Christ. I dare you. I dare you to have sex. Did he double dare you? Did he double dare you no returnsies? Because if he double dared you to, I don't know what else you could do. The wine, the tequila, the beautiful face... And this prick saying I was too conservative, alongside the fact having sex in a toilet is on everyone's bucket list. Is it? Is that on every girl's bucket list, is it? To get banged out in a toilet? What else is on this bucket list? The next thing I know, I'm sitting on the sink in a disabled toilet on a Tuesday night whilst a South African lad bangs the fuck out of me. Like, I never really understood the logistics of getting banged out on a sink. You're sitting on the sink and... (laughs) Is he on his tippy toes? He's South African. He's probably fucking huge. He's probably tall and he's probably got a fucking eight-inch cock as well. No tippy toes for him. We go to another pub. We continue to drink. I then remember having sex in a cubicle of a men's toilet in the next pub. For fuck's sake less private and stinks of piss i need to get myself home i somehow ditched this lad i'm not too sure you did the ditching but we'll say that somehow i ditched this lad and make my way to mcdonald's after realizing i hadn't eaten anything and i've got work tomorrow i buy a homeless guy a burger and a fanta like the lovely girl i really am and tuck into a burger myself The next thing I remember, I'm stood in the toilet of a train station half an hour later with a golf ball sized head injury just above my eye. This thing is fucking huge. So sore. People are looking at me like I'm a freak. I've fucked it. 
How am I going to explain this at work tomorrow? I've literally no idea how I've even done it. And I can tell you this right now. She sent me a photo of the egg on her head and it was fucking massive. It was like a giant fucking like golf ball sized egg right in the middle of her forehead. I don't even know how you could do an injury like that. It's like you've been hit by an actual golf ball. I can vouch for that head injury. I get myself on a train home. I sit with some peas on my head for an hour. Pray to God that it'll reduce by the morning. Wednesday morning, I'm saved. It's reduced enough to drag my surprisingly unhungover self into work for a three-hour meeting with a brand new boss with a deformed head, wondering at what point it all went wrong and whether I actually do need to give up alcohol like Boyle. Luckily, that feeling wears off and I head out that night until 12 on the red wine for my brother's birthday. The black eye came on Thursday when I was off to the funeral for one of my alcoholic friends. Pretty fucked up week. Yeah, that was a fucking wild week. That was a wild story. You know what? After reading out that story, I'm probably going to get some messages from some of the scumbags that listen to this podcast. Maybe this podcast can be like a dating app. I'll filter them out for you, and then I'll send them your way. (laughs) Nah, thanks for the story. That was a great fucking story, and I'm glad you sent it in. I hope it wasn't too fucking seedy. But when there's sex involved, there's going to be some crossover seediness. Thanks for the story. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Fucking I'll see ya the fuck later.